All right, let's lay out a web. We're going to use dual angles on this web. It's one of my favorite balls that Hammer brought out. It's just a real strong cover with a strong core. Uh, allows me to really blend the patterns out uh, no matter what the layout is. But uh, I want one that is going to be a little bit more lengthy, uh, a little bit more down lane. So to kind of complement the one that I have that is uh, that's pinned down and smooth. So in order to create dual angles, we have to have obviously a prosec that has the angle increments on the sides of it. Okay, so the first line we want to draw is we want to go directly from the pin through the CG all the way down. Now, if this ball was asymmetrical, we would then be drawing from the pin to the mass bias rather than the pin through the CG. The CG then wouldn't matter on an asymmetrical ball, but this is a symmetrical ball, so we're just going to go from the pin through the CG and draw it straight down. So we have our first line. Now, to create the first angle, we want to take the zero of our prosec and we want to put it directly on the pin with the line on the back going straight through the CG. Okay, so we're going to go there all the way through the CG. And then we take and we make a mark at the angle that we want. Now, I said I wanted to have a ball. I wanted this to go a little bit further down lane. So we need to understand that the smaller the angle number that we create here, the earlier the ball is going to respond to the friction or to respond to the lane. The bigger, the larger the number on this angle, the, the, the later the ball is going to actually respond. So we want a bigger angle because we want it to get down lane, but we don't want to get it too far down lane. So let's just, let's go with 65. We could go all the way up to 90, but we'll go with 65. So where that mark was at 65, we're then going to line up from the pin and we're going to draw it straight through there. Okay. So that's our first line at 65, okay? Now we need to figure out how much we want this ball to flare. So I still want it to flare quite a bit because um, I want it to continue off the pattern. I don't want it to stop. So I want it to go, let's go four inches. We're gonna go four inches. So then all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the zero and you're gonna put it directly on the pin on that line you just drew and you're gonna make a mark at four inches. So that there, is your next line, where your next line is going to go. The line that you're going to create now would be considered your VAL, okay? And this is obviously your positive axis point as well. So now you're going to take the zero from your prosec and you're going to line it up on that mark you just made on that line with the prosec facing back towards the pin. And you're going to figure out your next angle. So you're going to come over here. Now I want it to be uh, pretty strong off the spot. Even though we want it to get down lane, I want it to be stronger off the spot. So the lower the angle this time, the stronger down lane it's going to be. The higher the angle, the smoother the arc or the smoother the motion is going to be off the back of the pattern. So I want it to be fairly strong still. So I'm going to go right at about 30 degrees. I'm going to put my pencil on the mark I just made and line it up with my positive axis that I found on the VAL. I'm going to draw it straight down and through. Okay, so now we have that line. So now we know we have 65 degrees by 4 inches by 30. So all we're going to do now is we're going to go to this line, this right here, where these two intersect. That's our positive axis. We know that my positive axis is 4 and 7 eighths inches over by an inch and a half up. So we're going to go from this line. We're actually going to go down, so that way that marking ends up being an inch and a half up. So we're going to go an inch and a half down. We're going to make a new mark here. Line this up straight up and down and draw from that line four and seven eighths inches over. I'm actually going to draw through that mark and draw four and seven eighths inches. So from this line, you can see this is four and seven eighths inches. We're going to line straight up there. There, that's our center line. So this is now the center of our grip. And the fingers are gonna go here, thumb is gonna go there. That's gonna give us that 65 by four by 30, okay? So hope this helps. Hope this helps you guys figure out how to lay out bowling balls using dual angles and what you can actually do. I just wanted to throw another ball in there so you guys had another example of how to do it. So uh, take care, we'll see you guys later. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, we will see you guys all at the next Mug Club podcast coming up.